I would like to express my concerns about the Common Core State Center's initiatives. My concerns are threefold. One, the historical failure of centralized education. Two, the origins of CCSSI, motives of its creators, and potential for ideological abuse. And three, the problematic concept upon which the idea of standards currently exists in modern education. As a longtime homeschooling parent, someone who speaks with hundreds of home educating families across the country every year, I am intimately aware of the potential of entirely decentralized education. Each family serves as its own school district, often with the father as superintendent or principal, the mother as homeroom teacher. Although registration and reporting requirements for homeschoolers vary by state, with Oklahoma being one of the least restrictive, even in states that require district supervision by a government-run school district and mandatory standardized testing requirements, homeschooling families exercise a great deal of freedom as to their curriculum choices and teaching methods. Therefore, it is somewhat of an experiment in ultimate decentralization and complete local control. So how do homeschool children do? In any demographic category, from family income to parental education to geography, homeschoolers meet or exceed their peers in tests of basic skills, ACT, SAT scores, and college acceptance. Now, while we must admit that public school children who live in two-parent homes with above poverty level incomes are also likely to score in the upper half of the percentile ranges, thereby indicating the critical importance of parental involvement in education, we cannot find any statistical advantages of centralized curriculum control. In fact, there is no, as Ms. Pullman pointed out, no historical precedent indicating that top-down dictated curriculum has any effect at all on basic skills. In fact, the last few decades might indicate at least an empirical correlation between increased efforts by U.S. states to create more rigorous standards and the decline of basic math and language skills of U.S. students. Even in my short time of 16 years working professionally with various public school districts in California, Washington, and Alaska, it is evident that the push for standards in these states has had little, no, or possibly a negative effect, at least in the area of my expertise, teaching writing skills. In her 1990 book, Why, 1990 book, Why Johnny Can't Write, Myrna Linden cited several studies that indicated writing skills had been declining for 20 years. In 2005, a Carnegie Foundation report indicated no improvement, and I don't think there are many university teachers or businessmen who will argue that things have improved in the last decade. Oh, I thought it was pretty loud. We heard you just fine. Okay, <laughs> pretty loud. <laughs> Thank you very much. To go over the internet. Um, I don't think there have been university teachers or businessmen who will argue that things have improved in the last decade. So while we certainly cannot blame an increase in legislated educational standards for the decline, other demographic factors are likely responsible, we certainly cannot expect, based on historical precedent, that centralized standards or curriculum can have much effect on the problem of declining abilities. For these reasons, I cannot see any advantage for the state of Oklahoma, or any state, to continue to require implementation of the Common Core Standards. Any benefits these new standards might have cannot possibly outweigh the harms. Expense to the state and its public schools, an added burden to administrators and their staff, and the further suppression of teacher initiative and ingenuity. I think we can all attest by personal experience, and it is supported by research, that the quality of the teacher makes the greatest difference in student performance. Centralized curriculum, in its effort to make all classrooms similar, ends up handicapping great teachers for whom innovation and enthusiasm go hand in hand. Although revoking Common Core standards would not solve the problem of declining basic skills, it may allow Oklahoma schools freedom to pursue with greater autonomy curricula and methods that do work and, as is always true in a free market economy, successes will be imitated. Less central control over education will encourage schools to innovate, attract talented teachers, and strive for excellence. Uh, I do have many personal examples of having visited schools that fall directly in that description. 
There are many versions of how the Common Core standards came to being. One only has to start reading reports, watching YouTube videos, or reading political blogs to realize the complexity of the story. And I don't purport to have studied the issue enough to know the whole truth. But certain things do appear to be the case. Funding for the Hunt Institute came from several sources, chief among them the Gates Foundation. Various educational publishers supported the efforts indirectly, and the Department of Education created financial incentives, as we have just heard from Ms. Pullman. As a private citizen, <clears throat> my approach in thinking about this would be to follow the dollars who might benefit from nationwide adoption of the CCSI. Since the standards are technology heavy, perhaps the tech industries, because of a need for a completely revamped curricula from textbooks to consumables to multimedia supplements, publishers would definitely benefit. And I think we all see how the federal government tends to grow anywhere and everywhere it can, even in areas of questionable jurisdiction. While I cannot personally bind everything said by Glenn Beck and other very vocal objectors, I do see the potential for increased control over education, not just in the areas of math and language skills, but in actual content as well. Already, you have heard from experts concerned with the degradation of the literature in the Common Core Language Guidelines. I believe you have also heard from others about the possible expansion of Common Core to include the social studies and science standards, thus moving into areas of potential ideology and even propaganda. I formerly resided in California, and excuse me for that. Um, <laughs> I've been both amused and saddened by how the state educational standards there have resulted in publishers providing textbooks that distort history by rede redefining, quote, a missionary as, quote, someone who comes from a faraway place and tries to change the lifestyle of a group of people and disrupt traditional values by removing all references to mother, father, mom, or dad from all approved textbooks. Yes, these are things which the state of California has done. Of course, the California legislature has passed <clears throat> other almost unbelievable anti-common sense laws, but I won't go into that. Additionally, because of the virtual monopoly of textbook publishers, Pearson, McGraw-Hill, Hoot Mifflin, schools required to conform to the Common Core standards will have little choice when it comes to curricula, and the publisher's largest customers, California, New York, Florida, and Texas, have a great input on textbook content. In fact, CCSSI is a huge windfall for education publishers since most districts in most states are being forced to replace their existing text with CCSI conforming text, and any differentiations by state standards have been superseded by the Common Core. Consequently, the big publishers can now sell the same or very similar books to all the states, further increasing profitability. This, of course, makes it even harder for small publishers such as myself to keep a toehold in the public education market. Again, centralized and standardized education eclipses into in initiative and creativity. We are not only up against the marketing PR juggernaut of the big players, we now have to jump through ridiculous hoops to show that what we do, and have always done, not only builds basic writing skills better than most anything out there, but somehow meets or exceeds the common core standards. Oddly, there are some people in the homeschool world who are so politically opposed to the common core that they will boycott any homeschool publisher who claims to be common core aligned. This puts me in an odd double bind position. But I don't mean to complain to you about my publishing and marketing challenge. That's the vicissitudes of business. I mention it only so you can see how the CCSI adoption limits curriculum options for teachers and schools and erodes the benefits of a free market in educational materials. Lastly, I would like to make an appeal to common sense as opposed to common core and point out a fundamental problem with all standards and that is the meaning of the word itself. The common core, along with all state standards, dictates what should or must be taught at every grade level in math and language. Although some people are very good at dissecting and analyzing the language of the standards, I ask just one simple question. How can standards be standards if there are no consequences for failing to meet those standards? A teacher can teach, but she can't force a student to learn. What happens if a fifth grade student does not acquire the skills taught? For example, in Oklahoma grade 5 L1A, I think that's language standard 1A, quote, Explain the function of conjunctions, prepositions, and interjections in general and their function in particular sentences. As we all know, 
nothing will happen. There are no consequences. That student will go on to the sixth grade, seventh grade, and into high school whether he or she has any idea what a conjunction or preposition is or what it does. Therefore, this is not a standard that means anything. It's a suggestion as to what would be nice to know. And if students move up in grade level without mastering the so-called standards of the previous grade, then teaching to the standards becomes increasingly difficult, if not impossible, for the teachers. Therefore, we have a whole system based on an oxymoron, standards that are not standards, standards that do not have to be met, standards that will not change anything. If any other industry in this country held the illusion that not meeting standards had no consequences, it would lose credibility. If quality standards for cars were not enforced, the cars failed to meet those standards were graduated into the marketplace anyway, consumers would be outraged and car manufacturers would either have to change or they would cease to exist. If soldiers were sent into battle, whether or not they passed a boot camp and could handle a weapon, the citizenry would scream objection. Yet somehow, in education, everywhere in this country, we pass many standards. We pass many students to the next grade level, the next school, even to college, even though they lack basic skills and general knowledge. Standards initiatives have done nothing to change this. The past three decades have proven it. Perhaps real education reform is possible. I truly believe so. However, we cannot expect more government-approved verbiage about what students should learn to reverse this trend. Much more fundamental changes are needed. While I personally have some probably radical ideas as to what could be done to challenge the status quo of decreasing basic skills of American students, such is not our purpose today. I welcome you to refer me to the Superintendent of State Education uh, or any other committee that would like to hear those ideas. For the moment, I very much appreciate your time spent listening to my concerns about the Common Core. I hope my perspective as an Oklahoma resident, curriculum publisher, and homeschool parent has been at least a little bit helpful. Even more, I thank you for your daily service to our state and its people. I cannot imagine that enduring meeting after meeting such as this is at all easy. God bless you. <laughs> meeting after meeting like this after a while. We're trying to keep it uh, a little bit entertaining. Uh, questions? Are there questions uh, for Andrew? I uh, wish he's not familiarity, but uh, your last name pronunciation still escapes. It's, it's an unusual name. Yes, okay. Uh, any questions? Representative uh, Curry, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, it's my understanding that it's my understanding that in the Common Core, there is going to be a much greater emphasis upon writing uh, at all levels. Uh, are you aware of this, and do you have any thoughts on that? Uh, we are acutely aware of it, and in a, uh, a kind of mixed way, it's opened up some doors for us with schools that have not been attending to that uh, problem of decreasing writing ability. So we are working on aligning what we do without changing what we do to help meet those standards. Although I will confess to you, I find them um, pretty fuzzy. Um, uh, our goal is to help actually schools clarify that. Uh, so yes, I, I would agree that it has created a need or an awareness of need in some places. Uh, it's my understanding that uh, students are going to be asked to do much more writing and to offer an opinion upon things about which they have not, they know nothing about because they have not been adequately given the proper background on certain subjects. Are, are you, is, is this your, is, have, have you heard such this? Uh, yes, that, uh, I think it goes even deeper than that. Students are being asked to articulate ideas not only that they do not have, but articulate ideas in words that they do not know and in sentence patterns they cannot produce. So we're working at a, a very much lower level of kind of basic skills and that's one of the things that uh, you know our company is working very hard is to develop basic skills and as Joy Pullman said, you know, uh, higher order thinking is not possible without basic skills. 
Representative Sheldon, may I recognize for a question? Thank you, Chair. Uh, I'm just trying to piggyback on something that you said. So if I say it wrong, I, I caught a glimpse of a statement that you made. Uh, you were talking about the new standards are using sentences and using uh, words that they are not accustomed to, and they are they're going to be tested on the, these uh, this different curriculum. Is that correct? Um, I did not feel that I said testing. Um, the other uh, member here um, was asking about an emphasis on writing. And of course, one of the huge problems with trying to teach and evaluate writing is that it is very difficult to do mechanically through, say, a multiple choice medium. Uh, this is why the, you know, the college board has spent such a tremendous amount of money on the essay portions of the SAT and ACT. Um, I was trying to um, suggest that students don't have the linguistic skills to articulate the complexity of the ideas that they are being asked to think about. Is that? Yes. And, and let me, at, at, uh, at what age do you think that uh, students should be able to articulate those ideas? I, I, I think one of the, I'm going to get in trouble here. <laughs> I, I think one of the most fundamentally disordered things about education in our country today is that we compare children based on age. That we have an expectation that just because a child is, say, 10 years old, that they should have a certain ability to do something. Whereas a true standards-based approach would have skills, developments in a sequence, and it would be perfectly acceptable for children to move through that development of skill sequence at a different pace. For a follow up. Thank you. Um, and I appreciate your, your candor. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> my, my next question is Oklahoma this year is going to implement uh, something called the Reading Sufficiency Act in the state of Oklahoma, which measures all third graders. Mm -hmm. it expects them to be able to read and articulate the positions, uh, and do it themselves, third graders. Uh, would you say that that was, is that in line with what you were saying today, that one is okay and one is not? Um, I, I, I see what we're doing here in the state of Oklahoma with the Reading Sufficiency Act very, very much the same as what you're saying. Yes, I think that that idea of testing third graders would only work if all third graders had actually succeeded learning what was taught in second grade. But you and I both know that third grade doesn't mean anything except you're approximately eight years old. So children will go into the next grade regardless of their experience the previous year because we don't hold children back. It is deemed that, you know, the psychological of damage that would do would be greater than them moving forward without having the skills taught at that level. Now, let me just add, I have a son, I have seven children, my son is my sixth child, he did not, thank you, he did not read anything until he was 11 years old. He did not read a book until he was 12 years old. He is one of the most profoundly dyslexic humans I have ever met, and it isn't like I don't know how to teach someone to read. The fact was, reading for him was a brain function, not a teachable, learnable skill. When he did start to read, he immediately started to read sophisticated material at his intellectual level because we had made a strong effort to read to him out loud in huge quantity, provide him with audiobooks, etc. Uh, he is now 16, does competitive speech and debate, um, reads anything he can throw at him, and actually is one of my, of my own children, one of the more articulate of them, and the better writer. So I think it is extremely dangerous to to judge children on their reading skills based on age, for had he been in a school for the first few years of his educational period, six, seven, eight, nine years old, he would have been branded a complete idiot. One final follow-up, then we'll have to move on. Okay, I have one more question, but it's got two parts. That's two. 
<laughs> anyway, my son has dys dyslexia as well, and uh, he's seven years old. And uh, are you aware that, uh, and I'm, I feel like I've changed the subject a little bit, but are you aware that um, we are about to uh, measure all third graders at the same levels in the state of Oklahoma uh, on the Reading Sufficiency Act of whether they have dyslexia or any learning issue? Are you aware? I am not aware of that. I know that Alaska did that with benchmarks and it was pretty much a disaster. Okay. We're straying a little far off the path, but uh, we appreciate that. And, uh, Thank you for your presentation. We appreciate it very much. Thank you.